When I very first came up with the idea for this challenge, I think I way underestimated how difficult the editing was gonna be. I mean, the landing, the land, how difficult the landing with, the, there's no editing in the video. This is not edited, it's, it's, it's a, a landing. Hi guys, I'm Brian. Welcome to my master class on pulling off one of the most difficult and challenging landings probably in the history of aviation. Uh, if you've been following my channel at all, or you're even sort of at all involved in aviation, you're probably aware that not only am I a pilot, but I'm a pilot who often gets involved in these sort of uh, challenges. Um, and I don't think it's any surprise that uh, some people copy me. Um, I think uh, most recently, uh, and we're talking about the Red Bull guys, let's just put it out there. Most recently, they did that plane swap where they had two Cessnas airborne and pilots jumped out uh, and attempted to swap planes in flight. Um, I think everyone knows three weeks prior to that, I did the plane swap successfully. It was just, I did it on the ramp, um, but that's not the first time. They've been riding my coattails for a while. I think if you recall a handful of years back, Felix Baumgartner jumped um, out of a balloon uh, from the edge of space. Um, well, just prior to that, I jumped off my bottom stairs holding a balloon into a pile of Legos. Um, and so they get more coverage and notoriety because they have big sponsors like Red Bull. Um, when I jumped off the stairs, I was sponsored by uh, Trapper Keeper. And uh, when I did the plane swap, of course, that one was sponsored by the number three and the letter P. I decided for this next challenge, um, I was going to reach out to the big guys. So I called Red Bull and said, hey, I've got this idea for this. We'll call it a stunt. That's what it was. Um, and then they said, uh, we're busy that day. It was a Wednesday that I wanted to do it. I have a real job. And Wednesday, I had some PTO and I wanted to go land my plane on a heliport at a hotel in Dubai. Red Bull said they were busy. I said, I'll find another sponsor, but I called the hotel and the hotel said, sorry, another group of pilots are using the helipad that day. Turns out Red Bull took my idea and ran with it. I think you guys all saw the landing last week. Um, this team of people involving Red Bull and Mike Patey and a lot of folks landed this carbon cub on this helicopter landing pad at this hotel in Dubai. It was fantastic. It was amazing. I love the Pateys. I love all the people involved with that. And I think it was great. Um, but it was kind of my idea. And so I said, well, I'm going to have to take it a step further. So uh, with Red Bull out of the picture, I decided I was going to call Gold Seal uh, and ask them if they would help me do a challenge. And Gold Seal said, you know what, Brian, sorry, we're in the business of making pilots, not making old, bold pilots. Um, so they weren't willing to sponsor me. But if you want to become a pilot, you should go to groundschool.com and click the Get Started for Free link. It will change your life. So that was it. It was a no from Gold Seal, a no from Red Bull, and a no from the hotel in Dubai. So that's when I decided it was time to up the stakes, and I went the next logical step, Crystal Pepsi and the Kipps Big Boy statue. Right away, you're saying, I thought it was Bob's Big Boy. It doesn't matter. There's a bunch of them, and they have different names. It's a statue with a dude holding a hamburger, and by God, I am going to land my plane on that hamburger. And I did. And I want to talk a little bit about the process, how I worked up to that with the Crystal Pepsi team. Um, we had a lot of safety people. We had a, There was a lot that went into this. It's not just flying your plane and landing on a hamburger. That's easy. This is very complicated, and I want to talk about the process I went through and where my mind was at each step of the way. The first aspect of a challenge like this is safety. If you watch the video on Mike Patey's channel, they talk about having um, firefighters nearby. They had scuba divers in the water. They had helicopters hovering around. They had all sorts of safety mechanisms in place. And safety is just as critical to me. I knew I had a lot of research to do. That meant learning about the different types of breads and the surface because I have to land on the top of what's essentially a giant hamburger bun. Um, I went and researched sourdough bread. I learned about bagels. I learned about wheat bread. I learned about toast. All different types of research had to go into learning about different breads and their different surfaces. And it's not just me, it's a team. There was a team of us that worked together to determine how these breads behaved in different scenarios, what their compression strength is, how much weight they can carry. We all worked together as a group and also individually to determine the safest way to land an airplane on top of a giant piece of bread. So now that I've done all the research on the target, what it is, uh, the next step is how are you going to hit the target? So in order to figure out how I'm going to hit this target, and remember, this is a small target. This is not easy to do. 
That means we got to sort of replicate or simulate exactly what I would be doing. And so that means using scale models of the statue, scale models of my airplane, and designing a scale solution for how I'm going to approach it. Um, I need to know what route I'm going to deviate around it in the event that things don't look good. If I get a bad crosswind or something else is happening, I need to be able to change course pretty quickly so that I don't smash into this giant hamburger or the big boy himself. Because at the end of the day, we want to be successful, but we also want to be safe. And one other thing I haven't spent a lot of time talking about is the math. There's a ton of math involved in the calculations, uh, how I'm going to approach it. The winds on the ground may be going one direction, but up near the top of the hamburger, they could be going a different direction. And so the math has to be right. Um, unfortunately, I'm really bad at math. And so this turned out to be extremely frustrating. Uh, there were several times where I, I thought about giving up. Um, but then in a moment of clarity, everything came together and I came up with a perfect solution for how I wanted to approach the statue. Uh, and so now I've got a plan. So now I've got a plan in place. I know what my target is. I know how to hit my target. I got the safety precautions ready. It's time to put the plan into action. I'm launching from Northwest Regional Airport, just west of Dallas, uh, and I'm heading to Burbank, California, where the best of these big boy uh, statues uh, live at. And I know what you're saying, that's a thousand miles, Brian, you're gonna need to fill your tanks, and that's absolutely correct. Um, I will share a tip with you. The higher you go in these little airplanes, the less fuel you burn because the less air there is. Uh, so what I opted to do is get in my Comanche and I climbed, as you can see, up to about somewhere between 60 and 65,000 feet where there's almost no air, which means you need almost no fuel. That enables me to get to Burbank without having to stop a bunch of times and fill my tanks. Once I got in the area where I knew the statue was at, I started flying towards the big boy statue. And I was feeling super confident, but when that face shows up in your windshield, it catches you by surprise. Anybody who, who wants to do this after me, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of copycats, um, be prepared to be a little bit startled when you see that face looking at you. At one time, for a second, I thought it winked at me. It was creeping me out a little bit, and it could have been the sun playing tricks on me. Um, and so the very first attempt, I actually decided to abort and go around, because I thought, I thought I was gonna hit him right in the face. All right, I'm gonna abort this one. We got a little too close to the face. I'm looking for less face and more uh, hamburger for this landing. Because I had to go around, that took up a little bit of time that I hadn't planned for, and so I decided, you know what, rather than stopping on top of this thing and celebrating and having a big party like most people would, I'm just gonna do a touch and go on top of the statue and then head back home to Dallas. So the second time around, I came in, I was lined up pretty well, and there you can see uh, the hamburger and everything is perfectly lined up. And I managed to get the plane down on the burger. And then my, my landing roll and my takeoff roll were perfect. Uh, there were no issues. I was able to take right back off and uh, launch right back into the air and head back uh, with no issues. Is it a world record? I, I don't know. It probably should be. Um, someone will probably do it after me and, and they can take credit for that. I'm not here to set records. Uh, I'm just here to move mankind a little bit forward. Um, when I see videos um, like the one with, with Mike Patey celebrating uh, on top of that teleport in Dubai, you know, he's, he's not necessarily celebrating what they did. He's celebrating what they allowed us to do. Um, with that uh, challenge that they did on that heliport, they, they loosened the lid on the jar but I got the pickles out. And so when I see Mike jumping up and down, celebrating, what he's really celebrating, what he allowed me to be able to do. Because of what I did, we got the pickles. So that is a one small step for man. What I did is what I would consider a giant leap for mankind. Um, so that's it, we've done it. We've accomplished our, our aviation dreams and goals. Everybody can land and go home. Um, it's, it's, you know, a hero is a, a word that I, I would probably, a lot of people say they don't like to be called a hero or a genius. So I, I, it is, it's, you know, it was the, the skill, the challenge, the talent. I want to thank everyone for watching the video. Uh, thank you, uh, Mike Patey and, and the Red Bull team for laying the groundwork that allowed me to do this, uh, for, for general aviation and aviation, mankind as a whole. Honestly, um, I think this has created a springboard. There's no telling what people are going to be landing on after this. Uh, but I can't wait to watch and see. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, thanks to Gold Seal uh, and Crystal Pepsi and Trapper Keeper. Um, there's really so many people to thank that the Patreons, is, the list goes on and on and on. So thank you guys for um, uh, sharing videos and watching videos, all that kind of good stuff. 
Um, I'll see you all at Oshkosh and Sun and Fun and all these things coming up. Keep an eye on the channel. There's a whole lot coming up about things that are going to be happening in the near future. So you guys fly smart and I'll catch you on the next one.